Not everyone wants to spend hours editing. In fact, most of you probably want something that's just quick and easy and helps you make better looking shorts, right? So in this video, I'm not only going to teach you about three great little editing apps to make your YouTube shorts faster, but I'm gonna test them all against each other so we can learn which one is fastest, easiest, and all around the best for basic edits on shorts. But also on these apps, you'll be able to use tons and tons of features Shorts won't have built into the app for a while, possibly ever, so I'll run you through some of the tricks they have up their sleeve too. So let's get editing with the first of my top three vertical video editing acts, TikTok. I know, I know you want to make shorts, so why am I telling you to use TikTok? Well, it's actually because TikTok is a really good editing program. To start, I shot a video and loaded it to my phone. To load to TikTok is easy. You just enter the app and press the plus sign. I shot it in sections, so the 20 second video is in three different clips. The footage I loaded in was on its side, which was annoying. This is due to the fact I didn't shoot this on my phone, I shot it on a camera and then loaded it to my phone, but it was really easy to rotate through a click of a button. Then all I had to do was trim the beginning and end of each clip that I'd loaded into TikTok. So I'd done multiple takes in the clip, which meant I only wanted to select the best part of the file, which on TikTok's quite easy. I didn't feel that accurate though, so quite a few times I had to adjust to make sure each clip was starting at the right place, so that was it. First step's done. The next step was to add some text. I just wanted some text in the beginning to let viewers know what the video is all about the second it loads on the shelf. And this was so easy to add. You just select the text option that is right in front of you. But there was a problem, which is good because editing is often about problem solving. My t-shirt had writing on it, which meant if I put more writing on it, it all looked a bit busy and the text well, didn't stick out. So I had to find a way to make it pop. All you do here is click the A button to change the text to have an outline, then click it again, and it makes it have a background. You then change the color and the look. So now the text sticks out no problem. There was a few fonts to choose from, but it's not that overwhelming. You can resize the text really fast using your touch screen to pinch and pull, and then you can set the duration of the text by clicking it and pressing select duration. After that, it's just a case of adding the text to each section of the whole video. With a bit of playing around, which the basic video was complete. Now I wanted to add a bit of an effect, so I chose from one of the many filters and effects. To add one, you just hold down the effect and let go when you want it to end. That's it, that's really easy. TikTok's got some crazy effects too. So what you can see now on screen is the finished video. It looks pretty good, right? Basic, fast, a bit annoying to do, but TikTok has other tricks up its sleeve, things like this. You can use so many effects on TikTok, it is mind blowing, add voiceovers, even more effects, slow footage down, speed it up, do split screens, use tons of different transitions. And the thing that makes it really easy for anyone is you can actually film the entire short in it too, which actually makes for editing in TikTok a lot easier. Which brings us on to the big issue with this. This video is on TikTok, not YouTube. That's a problem. Luckily though, you can download it from TikTok and upload it to Shorts, but it will have the flipping annoying TikTok watermark on it when you do this. Don't worry, I've got a solution for you. <laughs> upload it to TikTok, then download this app called SnapTik. You can copy the URL of your private video to SnapTik. URL, never said URL before in my life. Then download it and it will remove the watermark and then you can upload it to YouTube as a short, just from the app at the moment anyway, which is really easy to do. Otherwise you just save the video to your phone and upload. So a really big pro of this is, you can make content that tackles two platforms at once and they pretty much work the same way. So for the basics, I'm gonna give it 3.5 out of five. It's easy, free, a bit annoying. It took me about 15 minutes to do. Next up, we have InShot. I've got my imaginary gun back. So I loaded the clips into InShot, which was a doddle, and so was rotating them round. Then I was met with this timeline, and man, does it make sense the moment you see it. All the main controls are really obvious. The clips you have added are split with an option between them all to easily add a transition, and selecting the right part of each clip to use was incredibly easy. The whole clip I made was trimmed and cut within 60 seconds. It doesn't have the same issue TikTok has either. Clipping small parts of a clip off is actually very, very accurate. The next step was the text. Now, the main control bar has the text option just right there. Click it, you type in what you want, and you have more of a selection of font styles to get around the annoying shirt issue there were loads of text backgrounds that looked way cooler than the TikTok options, along with lots of text customization options. So you can add little animations to the text really quick, which wasn't something the video was going to cover, but it was so easy I couldn't resist myself. What makes this really good is the editing timeline. So 
You can layer things on top of your clip like you can in desktop software, then edit each layer. This means you get out of the footage that you've shot to create some B-roll. In fact, everything was so easy. I started chopping up the clips more and more and then cropping in and out in places to create this jump cut style that's big online, which just made such a difference to the video and makes it more engaging. And it was so easy to do. I don't see why you just wouldn't do this. You just split a clip, Click the part you want to jump in on, select crop and pull it in and that is it. So now I wanted to add one effect to funk it up, which was again effortless. I chose the intro and I chose one of the many effects they have going with this glitch. Now, because this had been so fast, I felt like I had more time on my hands to play with it. So I added a filter to make the colours more vibrant. You just select each clip you want and then pop on your filter and it was done. Check this out. Here's three reasons to try YouTube Shorts. Number one, they'll make you more focused. It's hard to make something short that's educational or funny or helpful. InShot also allows you to add sound effects, voiceovers, music, stickers. And for someone who's been editing videos for almost 20 years, if all I had to edit on was a phone, I don't actually think I'd be too bummed about this at all. This does the basics so well, and it only took me 10 minutes to edit this entire video. And I added way more to it than planned to. But one annoying thing is the free version gives you the watermark in the bottom corner, but for 79p a month, if you pay for a year up front, it will remove that and it'll open more features for you too. So I'm going to give this five out of five for an editing app that does the basics of shorts so well. And number three is Funimate. Let me give you some context to Funimate. It's an app that is really designed for making videos around music and dancing. Kind of like TikTok, you could film your videos in the app too and then edit and you can time yourself to the beat and it's awesome. <laughs> it's really fun. Now, even if dancing about isn't your bag or music, you just want something basic, this works well. So let's see just how well it did. So loading the footage was pretty easy, but rotating was not. I could not find an option to rotate the video in the app, which was incredibly annoying. So I had to go back to InShot to rotate my clip, then export them, then upload them to Funimate, because for some reason my phone wouldn't rotate them either. Now that's not to say there isn't an option in InShot to do this, but my point here is it wasn't that obvious. And this is about getting all the basics right and making far shorts. So not making that super obvious isn't that helpful. Once you've loaded your clips in, it is then really, really good. Like InShot, you get a nice editing timeline to play with, and the clips were really easy to trim and line up, and then to add text to, and that was really easy as well. I couldn't, however, find a way to solve my shirt and text issue any better than what you can see. I thought that was a pretty basic feature that should have been obvious, but I couldn't see it anywhere, so that's the best I could do. What I loved about this was, as you add more text or images down the right hand side, you see these layers you've added appear. So if you want to edit anything you've added to the video, you just click on the option on the right and it takes you straight there. That's actually better than Final Cut. <laughs> it was also really easy to add transitions to the text so that they animated in and also adding jump cuts, just like InShot was very easy to do, splitting them and then cropping them again too, which wasn't actually planned. And then finally, I chose an effect to funk up the opening intro and it was done. The big issue here was how long I spent trying to find a text option that covered my shirt. It actually made this the slowest edit yet, but I've used TikTok many times before, and this was my first time here and on InShot, so I'm not gonna be too harsh on it. Now I'd say the layout is excellent once you get used to it, and once you are used to it, you edit it fast. The basics are very good, and there's tons of room for growth with all these effects. So I'm gonna give it a whopping four out of five. Really, all of these apps are excellent at doing the basics, but I would say for speed and the basics, InShot is the winner. So TikTok, I'd say, is for anyone who wants to film and edit on the same app and play with a lot more effects, whilst easily multi-purposing their videos to TikTok and Shorts. And funny, mate, for anyone who just wants to go bonkers with creativity or just to get the basics right, they're all free. InShot and Funimate might mean you have to watch more ads and if you don't pay, you'll get less features. But for your YouTube Shorts or even just phone editing, they are worth getting to know. If you want to learn more about Shorts before they really take off, then check out this playlist with tons of short content in there that will tell you everything you need to know. Well, what I know so far, maybe not everything. <laughs>